This is the uh, pre-lab for Science 101 Lab 6, which is evaluating various brands of aspirin tablets. What we want to do is find the active ingredient in the competing brands. We use an iron reaction technique combined with color measurement using an instrument called a spectrophotometer. But it's easy to use and almost fun. Ah, but first, as we do, we'd like to review what we did last week. Remember, we had various brands of orange juice. The idea was to compare the vitamin C levels using iodine titration in the presence of a starch indicator. You guys did a great job, and we learned that simply orange tends to be the best brand in terms of vitamin C amount. Now, the lab this week is could be called find a needle in a haystack because uh, we're, we're determining a very small amount of uh, active material of interest in a really complicated mixture. So when you enter the lab the first thing you'll do is encounter two different brands of aspirin tablets. You need to tell me on the data sheet what you have. The letter embossed on it will indicate what the brand might be. In the case of Bayer, it simply says Bayer. But again, because we want to compare them, you need to indicate for me uh, what two brands you've been given at random. And again, just follow the uh, procedure in the lab handout and add the uh, correct amount of base and you'll be on your way. You crush first, though, the, the tablet of interest and it goes into the Erlenmeyer flask and then we'll transfer it later. Uh, into volumetric flasks, which are very accurate ways of determining volumes. Uh, it's very important, though, that you transfer only one milliliter of the whitish slurry from the uh, crushed tablet to the respective flask. Now, um, it, as a separate operation, you need to construct a calibration curve. What we've done is prepare for you highly accurate standard so, a standard solution so that if you vary the amount in uh, containers will generate colors that are related to the concentration of the uh, material of interest in them. Now again just follow the procedure using the burette to dispense these various volumes. It should be straightforward to do it. You need to keep them straight as to which is which by position on the bench or the labeling that's there. Once you've done that, the colors have to be converted to numbers. We do that using a device called a spectrophotometer. It's like a VCR size thing, but it's really simple to use. It uh, gives optical density readings in relation to the color of the respective solutions. You use a cuvette, a square cell, to uh, administer each liquid to the instrument to make the determination, and it'll reveal the number on a display on the front immediately, so no problem there. And again, the orientation of the cuvette is important with respect to the instrument. Again, follow the procedure in the handout. Now, rather than using a computer to create a graph, I thought it would be important for you to start with the grid that I provide along with rulers and pencils. And you need to make a graph that shows the relationship between concentration of standard and the optical absorbance. So the abscissa, or x-axis, indicates milligrams per liter of standard and uh, the vertical axis has to do with color or optical absorbance. When you create the graph, I suggest, you know, start in the lower left with the origin and count over 20 squares and label uh, the graph paper as indicated here. Now, the lab handout this week looks like this. Let's take a gander at it. Your name spelled correctly. Uh, flasks 0 through 4 relates to the standard solutions that you're going to be making up. The blank boxes or where you indicate the uh, absorbance from the spectrophotometer. Now, the idea, the calibration curve will be linear, so use a ruler to create the best fit that you can by eye to the points that you, uh, you outline on the graph. The idea then is once you create the linear graph, you go back to solutions A and B that have different shades of purple and uh, by putting them in the instrument you can find out where they fall on the calibration curve. And then of course 
of the concentration is revealed by, by that relationship. Now, going back to the, uh, the sheet, the concentration and the very bottom, the concentration is indicated by the graph, and the final box to the lower right would be time, 10 times the adjacent number because that extrapolates up to what was contained in the original tablet. Now, I like to call it a needle in a haystack because if you go through the numbers here, uh, the technique that you followed reveals, as I said, a very small amount of the material of interest in a very complicated mixture uh, using the wonder of science and creating color specifically from the molecule that we're, we're targeting. Again, when you uh, enter the lab, you're welcome to work in teams of two. Uh, but you'll find two different brands at each station and you need to give me results for both. And again, this is the only week where I require two uh, hand-ins from you rather than just the single data sheet because the graph will be attached to each data sheet. Safety-wise, we're in good shape this week. All your materials are fine uh, down the drain. But of course, safety you need to wear safety glasses as is true every week. Hey, that's it for this week, and it's been a pleasure working with you guys. Think kindly of science.